Dan Welk is with the DEC. Dan, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Uh, first of all, I got to tell you, uh, I know we're talking about uh, ash trees, the emerald ash borer. Yes. Um, I lost at our last house, which we just left, um, in the valley. Uh, they, that beetle or whatever it is uh, made its way onto our property, I don't know, maybe around eight years, seven, eight years ago. And within just a couple of years... I had maybe nine or ten trees taken out of my backyard. Just died. The, the bark fell off. You saw the little squiggly marks. And that was like eight years ago. How bad is it right now? It is, uh, seems to be creep, creeping closer every day. It was first discovered in New York in 2009, and it's gotten even closer. It's in Rome as of last year, 2016. Yeah. And we're just trying to get the word out to uh, kind of prevent people like yourself from having their trees die to give them options okay. while it's well they still have options yeah well uh so what can be done i mean if, if you see and, and so uh, correct me if i'm wrong the signs to look for is all of a sudden the tree doesn't have the growth on it that it used to have um that's at least what we saw the leaves and the leaves end up falling uh, the first sign we saw is the leaves begin to fall they turn brown and fall off in like early August. I'm like, oh wow, oh, wow, are, are the leaves turning already? That's yeah, you'll how, start that's... to see some dieback. Yeah. Uh, woodpecker activity is one of the mm-hmm. other earlier signs that when you start noticing that the woodpeckers are kind of flicking that bark off the trees yeah. before it even dies, they're usually the first ones to find it just because they know the beetles are there yeah. a lot quicker than we do. So they're. They're probably the best indicator before that tree dies. And another thing I got to tell you, just out of my own experience, um, I, I'm well. I'm going to climb up and and we're going to see if we can take some branches off the tree and take a little chainsaw up. And I'm climbing up. I got onto this tree, and I heard a crack, and that tree just cracked right in half, and it was about to fall over. I came back down. And luckily, I'd put a rope on it. We were literally able to pull the tree over. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, craziest thing I've ever seen. Boy, it's a good thing you went on that diet. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Stepping <laughs> on a tree. Boy, and... I put some weight on. That but... is part of the importance that when these trees do start to decline, they lose pretty much all their strength within the yeah. first two years. That that's With ash, that's pretty symptomatic that a dead ash will lose uh, its strength a lot quicker than some other trees that will be able to support themselves, and they just kind of fall apart. That if you've ever... Just like you had that experience, if you had ever had an ash tree come down, it just comes down in pieces. It yeah, yeah. A bunch obliterates. So. Yeah, that's and then when the is the bark is another. Uh, by the time the bark's coming off, it's all over, obviously. Yeah, that's sure. a pretty late sign. Yeah, that. but those those squiggly marks all beneath the bark, those that's all basically the 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 remnants of of the the work that the beetle has it, done. That is their uh, gallery of the pupa, kind of eating its way out of the tree. That's mm-hmm. what actually ends up killing the tree is that it cuts the, if you remember back to biology, the xylem and the phloem, that it cuts the tree's ability to move water and nutrients, uh, and that's what ends up killing the tree. So, I mean, I know years ago, Utica, what was it? Was it the oak tree? What tree did Utica that was so... Uh, uh, it was so prevalent in Utica, but we lost all of these trees because of disease years ago. Well, we've uh, lost a number of trees. We lost the American elm. We've lost it was the elm. chestnut. Yeah. Um, well, um, uh, interesting. So, uh, tell me, you're trying to really be proactive here, and and you need volunteers with with all of the uh, with all of these trees in in the Rome area, right? We are. We're trying to get volunteers. We're working on a survey in the next three days. We have public meetings tonight at the Clinton Central School at their Performing Arts Studio at 3 p.m. And then at 6 p.m. we have another meeting at Hamilton College at their Taylor Science Center, room uh, 3024. We're looking to just kind of inform the public, kind of get the get the word out there, and then also looking for volunteers that we're doing a survey Friday and Saturday from 8 until 3 p.m., where we're going to be looking over the ash trees in the village of Clinton, and then we're also going to be putting informational tags on the tree to kind of spread the word a little bit more. There will there'll be a, a little information on the tag, and then one of those smartphone, those QDR codes that you can just kind of click it, and yeah. 
it'll link you right to our website and get you all the information you ever wanted to know on EAB. All right. Well, listen, it's a, it's a menace, and it is just killing these trees, and it's a it's a big shame. One other quickie I, I, I found interesting. I learned so much about trees. Uh, all you got to do is buy a house, yeah, and yeah. instantly um, you are you have no choice but to learn. But we were trying to plant along a, along a fence. We were trying to plant tomato, tomato uh, plants and, and grow tomatoes. But along that fence, as it was going um, north to south, and along the fence, a very healthy tomato plant, healthy, and then a little less healthy, a little less healthy, and right down to the point where they were dying. Uh, I couldn't get them to grow. And I'm like, what is on that side of the property that is, that is killing these? Is it the soil? Turns out um, we had a black walnut tree. Yeah. Uh, right there. Never knew that black walnut trees can really, really cause a problem when for growth of even lawn wouldn't grow over there. Yeah, they uh, use a thing called alleopathy that it puts out a chemical that makes it only possible for only black walnut and possibly grass to grow under the black yeah. walnut tree. So. Pretty wild. Uh, okay, Dan. So, uh, again, this uh, survey of ash trees is going to be held Friday and Saturday. Yep. Uh, this weekend, uh, beginning at 9 a.m. and ending at 3 and volunteers should meet at 100 North Park Row in Clinton in order to get started. Correct. And we have public meetings tonight at 3 and 6 uh, okay. at the high school and the Hamilton College. All right. Okay, Dan, thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, Dan Welk from the DEC.